Okay, here we go. Okay, you're on Heather, it's your show. Okay, hi, my name's Heather Hukari. Um, I wanna jump right in because I'm so excited based on everything you guys said about video and how you wanna make more of it or make what, what you're already making better. Um, that is exactly what I'm here to do. So I am going to get right into it. I have a presentation that I'm gonna share my screen. Here we go and play. Okay, I'm gonna just Hello. change my Zoom view. Yeah, hi. By the way, okay. everybody please mute unless you're Heather. Everybody else should be muted. Amazing. Okay, go ahead. Okay, so today we are going through 10 steps that will help you make a talking head video. Okay, well, that's great. Is it very far from where you're living? Uh, okay. Okay, great. Oh. All right. All right, everyone. Uh, yeah, Mark, do you mind good. muting yourself? We can hear your conversation. All right. How's everything else? Yeah. Uh, Joyce is host. Can't you mute him? Everybody is muted now. Heather, unmute. Okay. You should be good. Okay. You guys can hear me. Sorry okay, cool. Mm -hmm. Okay. So quickly, who am I? Why should you listen to me? As Joyce kind of mentioned, that's my name. I've been in this profession for 20 years doing all that variety of video that she mentioned. I currently own a video production company in Denver called Video Service Hub, where we make a variety of videos for all types of different clientele. So that's very fun. And then a few years ago, I created Phone Video 101, which is exactly what it sounds like. It is teaching people the basics of how to shoot and edit video all on your phone because phones are able to do that and do that really well. And I just got, I don't know, just got some passion for uh, teaching people how to do it. So um, that's what I've been doing for a little bit, a few years now. So I'm going to start with a video that's just going to go through, it's me talking, so similar to this, um, but just going through some reasons why video is so important. I'm sure you guys know that and that's why you're here, but let's just solidify that belief a little bit. And you'll also learn a little bit more about me as well. Marketers who use video grow revenue 49% faster than those who don't. What this tells us is that video is simply an industry standard if you have any kind of business, be it in the form of social media presence or to showcase your products, it's just become a must. More video content is uploaded in 30 days than major US TV networks have created in 30 years. There is just a crazy ton of videos being made and shared. Are they all good? No. Could they be better? Yes. Hence you taking this course, right? Online shoppers who view demo videos are almost two times more likely to purchase than non-viewers. If I'm shopping online and there's a little demo video about a product, I am very likely to click on it and check that product out. And then it's very likely that that will sell me the product. People spend on average 2.6 times more time on pages with video. Including a video on your landing page can increase conversion by 80%. This is a website of a physical therapist practice here in Denver. He's got this nice little video on his landing page. A potential customer can click play and get to know a little bit about Jamie, a little bit about the practice. And finally, completely aside from marketing or money making, video is a great way to preserve your memories. I still love watching my home videos from when I was a kid. Grandpa. And now I have a son myself and I film him all the time. My passion for video started in my early teen years. If only smartphones had been around back then when I was starting, it would have been so much easier. But as it was, I had to go the professional route. I had to learn how to make videos using clunky, heavy, expensive gear, learn how to edit on souped up computers with professional software, which is all great. But when smartphones came around and they continued to get better and better, I really just fell in love with this medium to make video. It's a camera, like a really pretty great camera. It's in your pocket, you always have it. Anyone can make a cool video if they just know a few tips on how to. So I've been teaching people exactly that, how to make videos using their phones for the last couple of years. So video, 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 it's everywhere. Let's learn how to make it better. 
All right. Video. It's kind of a big deal, right? Okay. So talking head video, that is a very specific type of video we are going to cover today in depth, as much depth as we can in 25 minutes. Uh, so a talking head video is just what it sounds like. It's a video of a person talking directly to the camera the way I'm talking to you right now through this camera on my computer. It's framed from about the top of the head, a little bit above to the sternum or even the belly. It could be just, you know, a little bit further back even, you know, and that still considered a talking head video. This style is really popular on the news. It's still the way you see all news, whether it's the reporter out in the field or the people at the desk, they're all framed about here and they're talking directly to you, right? And then it's gained even more popularity on social media in the last few years. I'm sure as you've scrolled around, you've seen people talking to you directly to you through your phone, through the camera, um, you know, and presenting a product or just talking to you about whatever topic um, it might be. So why use this type of video, talking head video? Uh, <clears throat> a really good reason, kind of the main reason is to, to connect with the viewer. And the reason this works with for connection is that people really like seeing other real people. We like making eye contact that feels good to us on a deep primal level. We are born with this desire to look at people's faces. This is my son when he was a little bitty baby. And, you know, if there was a face, he would find it and he would look at it, um, loved it. You know, we had visitors and <clears throat> maybe we shouldn't because it was a pandemic, but my family wouldn't stay away. So he met plenty of family members and just like took them in, you know, um, even better if you're making a cute, goofy face or whatever the case, but he was learning through expressions from looking at people, seeing the expressions they make, the way that they talk. That's also how people learn how to talk from hearing and seeing what's going on. So even Elmo's face, he's still obsessed with Elmo's face. Um, but that, that doesn't really go away as we grow up. We still really, really like and need to look at people um, and have people look at us too. So by making a video this way of you talking directly to a person, even though it's not in person, is really the closest you can get without being in person, right? Um, so it really is a more personal video than a talking head. I like to call them face-to-face -face videos because it's like, I want you to imagine that's what it is. You are putting your face in front of another face. So you're having a conversation, even if it's one way, you're still telling them what you need to tell them to get them interested in you or to convey information to them. Uh, and in, in a way it clones you because of that, because you can't get in front of every potential customer you might have, right? I mean, it's just impossible. But making a video of you, like the video you just saw of me, you know, that's on my website. So people can watch that, get to know me a little bit without me having to, you know, book a Zoom call with them or be in person with them. So I like to think of it as cloning you to expand your reach, get your face in front of more faces. All right, so let's go through the 10 steps to make this thing happen and make it look good. First thing, you really want to know before you hit record ever, ever, ever on your phone, um, you want to know what, what your content is. What are you saying? What is the purpose of this video, um, right? You don't want to hit record and just stutter the whole time and, and be thinking while you're recording. Uh, so you want to be really clear what your message is by preparing ahead of time to avoid that stammering and stuttering that nobody really has time to watch, you know, like, People want you to be concise and clear and to the point. So I would uh, recommend writing out some bullet points at minimum um, that you definitely wanna cover within this video. You could also um, write out a whole script. We'll talk about that in a second, but practice in front of a mirror before you hit record as well. Uh, in front of a mirror, in front of another person, if you're comfortable with that, I, it's really a great idea because you want to do this video as though you are talking to another person. So getting in front of a person is actually really, really awesome. But just run through, you know, your bullet points so that you under, so you get your cadence and you can kind of get the feel and the flow of how the video is actually going to go. And then if you do want a very specific script, you don't want to miss saying anything. Everything is super important. You could certainly consider using a teleprompter app. I'm not going to run through how um, to do that. I did go over that in my course um, in length, 
but this is kind of what it looks like. There's an app you can get on your phone that records you and words are rolling up on the screen and you're looking at the words, but they're near the lens. So it looks like you're looking in the lens, you know, close enough. Um, people on the news and in a lot of different video settings do use a teleprompter and it's like a glass thing that goes over a camera lens and it's rolling words. So they're just reading and they're just really good at looking, just reading the words and making it seem like they're not reading. Um, so it does take a little bit of practice to make a teleprompter look natural, but it's totally doable. Um, and it's really cool to me that they have apps that are teleprompters. That is crazy. Okay, so know your content. And just so you guys know, I know that you're taking notes and that is awesome. Uh, Joyce is also gonna send you a document that I sent her that has everything listed out too. So step-by-step step and all of these points. So if you miss something, you're still gonna be all right. Okay, <clears throat> you wanna know your look. A lot of people don't know what to wear on camera. You know, you, you might just be unsure like, oh, what am I supposed to wear? What's going to help me look better? Because everybody is a little bit vain and wants to look their best on camera, right? So um, I'm going to show you a video. It's maybe a couple minutes long. My buddy Jordan and I made it together. He's just going to run through some best practices for what to wear and what not to wear when you get on camera. There are certain things you want to avoid wearing on camera. Light pastel colors or beige can really wash you out. Bright white can confuse the camera as it'll expose for your shirt if you're shooting in an auto mode, and that won't make your face look its best. And don't wear dark black. Yes, I know black is slimming and everyone loves wearing black, but it can add some unsightly shadows to your face and no one wants that. In addition to these bad color choices, you want to avoid really tight patterns. They sort of vibrate on camera or distracting logos, which can be, well, distracting to your viewer. What you do want to wear are bright, solid colors. Look up jewel tones on Google and pick one of those. Or if you have a shirt that gets a ton of, oh wow, that color looks great on you Ooh. every time you wear it, then that's your shirt. Some subtle patterns are okay, like this bird shirt that I wear in almost all of my videos. Speaking of that, you wanna show off your style too. It's no secret that I love birds, hence my bird shirt. So don't be afraid to be you, or at least give the viewers a taste of you. And as far as jewelry goes, if that's your style, then wear it. Just avoid anything that's going to be really distracting, like giant glittery earrings, or anything that's going to be loud. If you have a necklace that's like always clinking against your lavalier microphone, the sound is going to drive your viewers crazy. And finally, makeup. You may think you need to go all out and wear a ton of makeup, but a more natural look is actually generally better. Think about how you look on a day-to-day -day basis and aim for that. People want to see other real, authentic people. A little powder can help men and women to cut down on some of the shine that's caused by the lights, but... Uh, but I don't actually wear any because I don't shine. Okay, that was kind of a lot of tips thrown in there. So with that in mind, this shirt I'm wearing right now is not a good video shirt. This pattern is way too tight. I just really like the shirt, so I wear it anyway. Um, a lot of times if I'm actually doing like a real video, I'll put a sweater over it that's bright yellow, and then that kind of cuts the pattern, and then I've got that jewel tone. But like Marla, the red shirt you're wearing is awesome. That is like a great, great video shirt. As soon as, as soon as you started talking earlier, I was like that background, that shirt. Yes. <laughs> that looks, looks so good. I love it. Okay. So just little things. I also, um, like I have a little section in my closet that is just video shirts. Obviously I didn't pick from that today. Um, but I've got some jewel tone shirts that I wear a lot. If I'm jumping on Instagram, I do a lot of reels and stuff like that. And I just grab one of those shirts because I know that it will look good on me and it takes out the decision fatigue that you get sometimes when you're trying on everything in your closet. I don't want to overthink it. I just prepare ahead of time and go grab something. Okay, so next you want to know your setting. And by this, I mean, what background are you going to shoot this video in? Um, if you're just shooting a video uh, and it's just you talking and you're the main subject and you just need to get this message across, you know, maybe it doesn't have to be any particular background. It can just be on a plain wall. That's fine. But if, if you can be in a background that relates to your business, um, that's great. It just adds a little bit of an element. It brings people in with you to your setting and your topic. So, you know, let's say you have a pottery business and you're talking about your pottery, like go in your studio so we can see your pottery in the background and get a sense of, you know, what your day is like and where you are when you're making the pottery. You could also create some depth to give your video a more professional look. 
And this is not necessary either, but if you can do it, it looks really cool. I'll show you a little clip here of what I'm talking about. If you have enough space to pull the subject away from the background, like the shot right now that you're seeing me in, then you, you've created depth. The background extends far behind me. I'm close to the camera, which creates depth, and it gives the video a nice professional look. Right. So like right now, my little office, I, I don't have a lot of space behind me. I'm really close to the back wall. So, you know, we have some elements back here that are like fun to look at, but I don't really have a lot of depth because I can't do that here. Um, but when you can, it's just like a nice, fun thing to do. Here's an example video of somebody on Instagram that has created some depth. 12 months, we generated over $10 million for our clients. Um, and this was an so, you know, it just looks nice. Obviously, it's like dated to Christmas, but she's pulled herself away from that Christmas tree and it just like gives it a nice aesthetic feel, makes it look a little bit more professional. Okay, next, you want to know your aspect ratio, okay? How are you going to set up your phone, horizontal or vertical? Uh, horizontal, 16 by 9, vertical, 9 by 16. It's just exactly the opposite, right? There are advantages and disadvantages to both formats. Um, horizontal is the standard still. Anything on TV um, is going to be 16 by 9. You don't really see anything vertical on TV because TVs are shaped horizontally, right? That's just, it's been the standard for a long time. It probably will stay that way for quite a long time as well. Um, so it's a good format for anything that might go on TV. Uh, but you do have to consider if you're shooting a talking head video horizontally, there's going to be more space behind you that you have to fill. So here, you know, we, he's got his camera, his light behind him to give it something back there. Um, but it's definitely empty space that you need to think about, right? And that's where getting in a setting, a background that makes sense helps a lot in that, in that way. But you also have to declutter. If you're in an office and you can see the whole office, you might have some messy areas. You know, nobody really wants to see that. I mean, it's not going to like make or break the video, but you might need to clean up a little bit to just, you know, make it look nice. Uh, vertical, this is super common on social media. So anything people are going to watch on Instagram, TikTok, um, if you're texting a video to somebody, which is kind of a common thing, verticals is a better way there because people are going to be watching it like this. You know, this is how people watch, go through their text. Nobody texts like this, I don't think. Um, so this is a great format for a talking head video because it just, it's like, it's like made for a person, right? It's, it just fills the screen. If you have yourself in there from sternum um, or belly to the top of the head. So it's really perfect. There's not a lot of background to fill necessarily. Um, so it's actually, I used to hate vertical because I'm kind of old school and like, you know, everything was 16 by nine, but now I'm like, oh yeah, this format is actually really awesome. And, and I kind of like it now. Um, I will say the the main way you decide how you're gonna shoot is figuring out what the final destination of the video is, okay? So again, if it's Instagram, TikTok, uh, maybe even Facebook, vertical, if you're texting somebody, um, if you're going, if something's going on YouTube, your homepage on your website, the, those should be horizontal, okay? Because that's gonna fill the screen better. So anything that's gonna kind of like live on forever is horizontal is kind of the way to go still. I will say if you're editing something together, if you have that capacity or you're going to learn how to edit you and you're using multiple clips in one video, you want them all to be the same format. It's kind of jarring if a video is going from filling the screen horizontally and then all of a sudden it cuts to a vertical video and there's black on the side, you know, or vice versa. If you're watching something or, uh, vertically and then it's filling the screen and then it cuts to a horizontal video in the middle and then there's black on the top and bottom. So it, you know, it's not, it's not, people are kind of used to that now, but it doesn't help your video look more professional to mix formats. Okay. All right. Know your framing, know about framing. This is kind of my favorite thing to talk about, uh, is the rule of thirds. This is something you may have heard if you've done any sort of photography, uh, classes or anything like that, anything about composition, the rule of thirds is huge. So, I'm going to play a video that's going to explain what that is and how to use it with a talking head video. What this means is that you cut the frame into nine boxes by drawing four lines. You put points of interest on the lines or at intersections. To apply this to filming people, keep their faces in the top third. 
Here, this guy's head is right in the middle box and he just doesn't look quite right. He looks too small. But move him closer to the camera and up in the frame and this looks much better. When shooting vertically, you can still use the rule of thirds to frame properly. You can add a grid to your phone to use it as a guide. Start by going to your settings. Scroll down to find your camera icon. Click on that and you'll see grid. Turn it on. Now go to your camera and you'll see you've got a grid on your screen. Start by opening your camera app. Click on the settings icon in the top right. Scroll down to grid lines and then select three by three. I just like to always leave my grid on to help guide me into good framing. All right, so if that went a little too quick on the how to turn your grid on, if you just Google how to turn my grid on um, on my phone, it's very easy. It's just in your settings, whether it's your iPhone settings or your Android camera settings, um, just look for grid and that's how you turn it on. But it really is helpful to be able to see these guidelines. So when you're framing yourself up for these videos, you just, just remember eyes, forehead in that, in that top third. And that's going to look more professional, fill the frame the proper way. So rule of thirds is awesome. It's very, very helpful. Okay. Oh, uh, here's an example. I pulled off Instagram of somebody that's using it really well. Social videos can literally skyrocket your business right now, but only in these two places. Yep. I'm, um, and I didn't mean to turn her off, but, um, what was I going to say? Oh, okay. Yeah. Let me go back to her. Social videos can lit. Oh, sorry. Social videos can literally. Um, so, you know, she's off center a little bit. That's fine. So it can be in the middle or you could be over here and still utilize the rule of thirds. You know, it doesn't have to be a center thing. So whatever makes the most sense for your video is totally cool there. All right. Let's talk a little bit about equipment that we can add to make our videos even better. Uh, you want to make your video stable, okay? Nobody wants a shaky video. I would highly recommend not holding the phone because it's hard to do and keep it steady. You know, it just really, it honestly is. Here's an ex a bad example of somebody's phone shaking. I have struggled with sleep for over 20 years. Sometimes I can fall asleep and other times I wake up at two in the morning and cannot get back. To also her sound is bad, which we'll get to sound in just a minute. But it's just like, it's not terrible, but it's just a little bit shaky. It's just moving a little bit. And you can tell she's holding it and it just doesn't look very professional. You know, uh, I would much rather see a stable shot anytime. So here is a, a video of me showing you some different options you can use for stability. A shaky video is a ruined video, really. There are tons of stability devices made specifically for phones. You could get a tripod, a mini tripod, a selfie stick and add a mini tripod to the bottom to make it a tripod. Or you could use a rig which adds handles to your phone. At minimum, have somebody else hold your phone and have them hold it very, very steady. Really your best device for a talking head video is a good old tripod. Be sure that it's set so the camera is at eye level, not too high and definitely not too low. Imagine you were talking to someone in person who is the exact same height as you and you're looking at them right in the eyes. All right, and another, another quick tip here for stability. If you're making video with your phone and you don't want to spend any money to make it look better, here's a tip for you. Grab a binder clip, clip it on your phone, set it on a stable surface, and then put your computer behind the phone to light your face. There you go. A great looking video. And you spent, I don't know, maybe 10 cents on the binder clip. All right. So you can get creative to, for stability. Okay. You can even set your phone on a shelf against a book, whatever the case, it just make it stable. That's going to go a very long way for your talking head videos. Okay, let's talk about light. We do want to make it bright. We want to light up the person's face as much as possible. And you really want the light to be coming from behind and the sides of the camera. I have a ring light on right now. If you look at me, um, if you can see my box, if I turn my ring light off, it doesn't look as good. I just have overhead light. But if I turn my ring light on, the light is the source is lighting my face. That's kind of the point of a ring light. So let's look at uh, a video here. In a talking head video, the person talking is the dominant subject. So we want to see them very clearly. Avoid overhead lighting because that can create some harsh shadows on your face. Ideally, you want the light to be coming from behind the camera and just lighting your face perfectly. You can purchase little 
little side lights that go on your rig if you went with that for stability, and that can light your face really well. You can also get a ring light. They're really popular nowadays. There's little ones that clip directly onto your phone that just light your face perfectly in a selfie video. You can also get a bigger ring light that doubles as a tripod for your phone. But if you're not ready to commit to these purchases, that's okay. You can use a window, a lamp. The main point is to get some light on your face. Yeah, so I really do highly recommend getting a ring light. You see, I have one back here because it is a tripod and a light and you're done. Um, so in the document Joyce is gonna send you, I have a link to equipment I suggest and there's a few different options in there price, price level wise. Um, I think it starts at like 30 bucks and goes up to like 180. Um, which the $180 one is bigger, brighter, has different temperature settings and is cordless, which is really nice because it runs on batteries. The other ones you have to plug into a USB source, um, which isn't the worst thing ever. You just plug it into your laptop if you have that there. Uh, but ring lights really, really are super, super useful as you're starting to make videos, talking head videos particularly. So that one. Okay, let's talk about sound. We want to make your voice really, really audible. And the best way to do that is to use a microphone. I really recommend a lavalier microphone. That's what it's called. It's the type that clips to your shirt. Let me show you a video of it being in use. This first one is a lavalier microphone. It's got a long cord, a microphone on one end. The other end would just plug directly into your camera. You've got to have a converter, of course, if you have a newer iPhone. I've got this old iPhone here, so I'll just plug it right in. This side goes under your shirt, ideally so that you hide the cord, it's just more pleasant for viewing. Clips right about there, sternum or lower. You don't wanna get it too close to your mouth or the sound could get distorted and be too loud. So of course you wanna do a test before you record for real and make sure that it sounds good wherever you place the mic. You wanna keep it clear from like jewelry or anything hitting it. Also, if somebody talks with their hands a lot, sometimes they can hit the microphone. Right now, you know, you're listening to me on another microphone. That's not pleasant, right? I just hit my microphone. So you want to make sure that nobody is hitting the microphone while they talk. So hands clear, jewelry clear, that you want that microphone to just pick up the voice really, really clearly. Let's watch a quick example video of somebody using a microphone and not using a microphone, a lavalier, and see what you think about the difference. Okay. Like Heather said, it's very important to use a mic when you're recording yourself on camera. I have this lavalier mic turned on right now. Let's see what happens when we unplug it. All right, so the background noise behind us, cars, dogs, people walking by is probably a lot more apparent. My voice isn't picking up nearly as well. Let's plug it back in with the back noise. Back in, my voice should be loud and clear again. And uh, the background noise is drowning out. So big difference, right? I mean, you could barely even hear him without the microphone. Special thanks to my ex-husband for still being in these videos that he doesn't know that he's still being shown in. Thanks. <laughs> um, all right. So even if you don't, if you have a mic or not, do these things too. Avoid noisy environments. Try to don't record at a coffee shop with 100 people in there or on the street with tons of traffic going by. You want to stay close to the phone if you don't have a microphone. Um, the closer you are, the better sound it'll pick up from its little internal mic that is not super awesome, but it's okay. Um, and then you can speak up on video, but you don't want to yell um, <laughs> because yelling can peak the audio and also nobody likes being yelled to or at. Um, so a little bit higher volume than a whisper, but not so high that you're like making people close their ears and turn or just turn off your video, right? Uh, here's an example of a bad, a bad sounding video. One of the biggest reasons why Mac users struggle when they're trying to manage and organize their photos is that they don't have the tech set up properly. Either they've got photos scattered on different devices, not enough storage space on their Mac. Okay, so she's using a microphone, I can tell that, but it's so windy that the wind is getting picked up in the microphone. So if you're outside, you wanna really be careful and watch for any, any external sounds that are gonna mess up your sound. Like your voice is, Light your face, make your voice good. Those are like the two biggest things you want to do um, to look good, to sound good, and come across professionally. All right. Do a test take before you record for real. Um, and by that, uh, and before you you record anything, your test take and your normal take, 
you want to wipe your your lens with a little cloth. This is really overlooked a lot of the time, but our phones are super dirty, you know, because we're touching them all the time and stuff. And if you have a toddler, especially, they're disgusting. Um, but yeah, if you have some dirt on your lens, it's not gonna, it might like not pick you up as clearly as it would. So just give it a little wipe with a lens cloth or whatever you have. Um, if you're in selfie mode, be sure that you are looking at the lens and not the, you're not yourself on the screen. This is a very difficult thing to do when you can see your face right there. It's really hard not to look at it. So a uh, quick video here to show you the difference. Quick. Ah, uh, sorry. Quick tip, when you're making a video for reels or anything really, make sure if you're in selfie mode, you're looking at the lens, not at yourself on the screen. Do not do this. Do this. The little the, the little circle, the lens on top of where your face is. This is where your face is. This is where the lens is. This is where your face is. This is where the lens is. Look there. It's going to improve your videos a whole lot. All right, and if you want to watch more tip videos like that, I'm on Instagram at Phone Video 101, and I make a lot of reels that are in the similar vein. Um, okay, so back to that test take. Um, I just want you to record yourself, maybe not even the whole script, just a little bit. Watch it back so you can test your sound, your light, make sure your hair looks good, you know, all of that stuff. Um, because if you hit record and you record the whole thing for real and you're like, oh, good, I'm done. And then you go back and watch it and like your microphone was too close and the sound is really distorted. You're going to be mad at yourself because you're going to have to go back and redo it. So just avoid that. Do a little test take um, and then adjust everything, anything that you need to do and then um, go back and, and then you're ready to go. Okay, I'm going to skip those because we're running out of time. Okay, the last little tip here I have is editing. Okay, um, we are not going to go through all of editing because that's a huge topic that I cover extensively in my course because I love editing, it's kind of my thing. Um, but you want to at least trim off the beginning and end of your clip. So I'm gonna just play a video that shows you how to do that on an iPhone. If you have an Android, it's very similar, just a little bit different interface, but I'm sure you can figure it out. So here we go. So I'm gonna show you just the basics of editing so that you can trim up the beginning and end of your clip before you post it anywhere. So you're gonna go into your photos app, find the clip you wanna edit. Simon here takes a pause there at the beginning. Hi, man. And I wanna trim that off because I want it to start with just him talking right away. So I'm gonna to go to edit at the top. And then if I just drag this bar here, you see these two little arrows at the beginning and end. That bar turns yellow and that means it's in trim mode. So it'll trim your clip. So I can slowly drag this and watch kind of, okay, that's where he starts talking. So I'm gonna back it up a little. I can hit play to preview. Hi, my name is Simon Sweet. Okay, that's good. And then the end, he also has some extra space there where he turns off the camera. So I can again, drag slowly, look for his last word. He ends on a smile, which is great. There we go. All right, and then you can use this little white playhead to preview just a certain part of the clip. The skills, the confidence, and everything you get from taking the course. So highly recommended. Great, that's exactly what I want. I'm gonna hit done. And you can either save a video as a new clip, or if you wanna just save over this, this version, uh, you hit save video. I'm gonna say it, just save the video because you know I, I don't need the part of him turning the camera on and off at the beginning and end. So now if I come in here to my photos, you'll see the clip is now trimmed. Hi, my name is Simon Sweet. I'm a at the beginning. And then if we go to the end. Everything you get from taking the course. So highly recommended. If you want to learn how to edit more, add graphics, add music, stuff like that, you've got to go to an external editing program. The one I teach in my course is called KineMaster. I really love it. I think there's a lot you can do in it and it's pretty easy to learn to use as well. So if you do want to get more into editing, I highly suggest taking my course so that you can learn all of the stuff about it because there's so much cool stuff you can do. All right. Hi, I'm Dr. Tara. And I'm sorry, let me go back here. So I'll just, I'll just play you like not even the whole thing, but um, just a little clip of a promo video of people that you know, utilized editing more. So you know what I'm talking about. It's a talking head video mixed with music, graphics, and B-roll, which is secondary footage. 
show you a bit of that. Oh, man. Hi, I'm Dr. Tara. And I'm Dr. Anna. And we help people in Parker to get out of pain, get healthy, and live life at 100% without the use of drugs or surgery. We see people every day who are dealing with debilitating pain and other chronic health issues like headaches and allergies. Unfortunately, traditional medical treatment of these issues can often be ineffective or have severe side effects. The good news is your pain always has a root underlying cause. That's where we come in. Okay. So you, they keep going for like 30 seconds, but you know, that would be, that's all done on the phone. That is talking head with a microphone, a light, a tripod, um, and then B-roll and then editing all of that together, which is all possible. Anyone can do it all on their phone. You just have to learn how to do it. So, um, but we're getting there, right? A couple of bonus tips here. You got to be patient with yourself as you're starting this out. Um, it, being on camera is scary. Not everybody is like born to be on camera. So it takes a little bit of practice, not only the tech part of setting it up and like remembering how to light yourself, how to frame yourself, all of that, but also just being patient with yourself, being on camera. Okay. Like here's a video I made. We're not, Hey, really my name is Heather. Time. I'm a video professional of 20 years. Okay. The video is like 45 seconds. I didn't use a teleprompter. I just, I just, you know, wrote out what I wanted and kind of memorized it. And you know, here's my phone roll. It took me 10 takes to get one that I liked, you know, and I've been doing this for a long time. I've been on camera a lot, all of that. So, you know, it's, it's not like you're just jump on and it's perfect. And you're like, Oh, that was the best video I've ever made. I've ever seen ready to go. Um, that's not really the case. It's a new skill. It's something you're going to have to practice and being patient with yourself will help keep your frustration level down as you're getting started. Okay. Um, and also practicing goes a really long way. The more you do it, the com more comfortable you definitely, definitely get more comfortable with the tech part, the more you do it, whether that's filming yourself, filming other people, practicing with filming your children, grandchildren, your pets, whatever the case, just practicing videoing people more on your phone is going to get you comfortable with the device and the things that go with it. Um, and then practicing yourself and, and getting comfortable looking at yourself on video too. watch your videos back and don't harshly criticize yourself, you know, like get comfortable looking at yourself. Um, and it, that's going to help a lot with your desire to get on camera and your stage fright and all of those things that are, you know, are common. It's not unusual for anybody. Okay. So that's kind of everything. I know there are a couple of questions in the chat. Um, we have like two minutes, but film video 101 is where my course live. This, this covers like so much more than what I was able to cover today. I've got a special code for you guys. Face to face will get you um, a two hundred fifty dollar. No wait, yes, a two hundred fifty dollar discount. The course is three ninety seven. Uh, for you guys, it will be one of forty seven. Um, if you're interested in doing that, you can also like email me or DM me on Instagram or something like that if you want to talk more about what's in there or want to have a one on one with me um, to talk about specifically what you might need or anything like that. Oh man, that was a lot of talking. <laughs> I'm talked out. Okay. Um, let's see. Should I hit some questions, Joyce, or what? What's yeah, why don't we stop the screen share so we get back to the whole crowd here? And I know that we're now advertised for the hour. Um, so I don't, you know, people have to leave. I certainly respect that. But if folks have questions, why don't you uh, just raise your hands? We have enough people. I'd say put it, um, use the chat, use the, well, go ahead, Jennifer. I see you. And then also Erica, I think had a question too. So Jennifer first. Um, I purchased, because my home computer didn't have a camera, I purchased another camera a next ago. And I'm wondering if you think that the iPhone is really a better way to do it or. So, um, I mean, you know, a real camera is great. Um, there's nothing wrong with it. There's just a little bit more of a learning curve. I think that goes along with that. Whereas a phone is pretty intuitive because we all use them. So it yeah. feels kind of like easier to jump in there and learn how to use it as a camera. There's less buttons and less adjustments because it does a lot of auto stuff for you, which is really nice. Um, and it's also just the convenience factor. I think, cause I, you know, I have a prof I've got a nice camera that I use for prof professional work a lot, but I also use my phone a lot too, even for professional work because it is more convenient. Um, it's always with me, you know, stuff like that. So it's definitely up to you. You could get great footage with a real camera for sure. Um, if you're willing to kind of go the extra length to learn it and practice with that. 
is that it seems like I had some trouble sending myself my videos to my computer. Is there like a short answer to that or is that a more complicated thing? Oh, like from how- your phone? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it depends on what your setup is, but I generally airdrop, I have an iPhone so I can airdrop to my computer. Oh. Um, if you have an iPhone, I would look up just Google AirDrop and learn how to do that. It's a really easy way to get videos and photos to other people or to yourself. Um, if you have an Android or something, a Google phone or whatever, I think you can do like uploads to Google Drives or Drop Boxes. Um, there's some different options like that to get yourself. I know how to AirDrop, but I don't think it'll AirDrop to my computer because I don't have an Apple. Oh yeah. Yeah. Then you might have to upload to like a Dropbox or Google drive or a different place like that. And then download from there. Yeah. Okay. yeah. Patrick's got a tip. I want to move on to Erica and Don and Dr. N and Mark. Go ahead, Erica first. Thanks so much, Heather. I really enjoyed this. My question is about lighting. I've watched videos um, about different lighting and I wonder about the ring light and people with um, darker skin. And I'm not sure if, if you know that in lighting other subjects, but I've there was a biracial woman who had done some, she's a photographer and she did several videos that I've watched and she's not in love with the ring lights. And so I wondered if you had more to clarify on that. So I would say for skin, different skin tones, I would get a ring light that has different different temperatures. So like this more expensive one, and you can just, if you're looking at the Amazon link, it'll tell you kind of if there's a temperature adjustment there, but you can get a temperature that's like really light blue. Like for instance, let me change. Like if you watch my face, this is a, um, a more white looking light. And I can also adjust the brightness too. This is like more blue light. This one's more like, this is more of a yellow light, which is the one I like, but you can sort of adjust the temperature for the expensive one. You can go like little like bit by bit. So it's like turning slowly yellow to blue to white. Um, and you can figure out which one looks best, you know, with that person's skin, because you're right. Not everyone has the same skin tone and you do want to, you know, make everyone look as, as good as they can. So, and also with the ring light, there was a question in the chat that I think it was direct to me from Mark, but um, he asked about glasses and, and um, reflection on the glasses. That is tough with a ring light. Um, one thing you can do is, is raise it up higher and kind of tilt it down like mine is right now. I don't have glasses, so I can't show you. But if it's a higher source, it might not catch in the rims as much. If it's just mm-hmm. face on, um, it's definitely going to catch in the, in the rims. If you're a person that doesn't need to wear glasses um, or you, you feel okay, you look okay without them, I would just say get rid of them for the video. But if it's part of your personality or, you know, you you're, you always have your glasses, then um, you're just going to have to do some adjustments and like fiddling around um, to try to get that reflection off. I will also say it's not, not the worst thing ever to have some re- light reflection. People are really used to seeing ring light reflection um, or even just not even ring lights, but normal video lights are normally boxes. And if you see a little bit in someone's glasses, it just, I don't know, it doesn't really matter. It's like, I don't think that many people notice or care um, if they see a little bit of reflection. So it's not like a make or break situation. Okay, I'm gonna go to Don and then Dr. N. Don had a question, I think. Yeah, I I found that I prefer just recording on my computer until Mm -hmm. it comes time for doing any kind of editing. The phones seem to have all the, the fun bells and whistles. Uh, are there some nice little editing things that you could just use off of the, the videos yes. recorded on our computers? Yeah, I would say check out a website. There, it's a, It is a video editing program that's a browser-based program. It's called InVideo, I-N, video. I think it's .io, if it's not .com. Let me look at it real quick. And yeah, in video.io. Um, I think you can just do it, try it out for free. And if you download the video, it might have a watermark on it. And then if you pay $10 a month or whatever um, it is, then they get rid of that watermark. Um, but it's 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 a basic editor. You know, you might have to do some learning on how to use it, but you can drop your video clips in, trim them up like you saw on the phone. You could add transitions or text or music right in there. Um, All editing programs have like a timeline. That's kind of what you're working on, uh, whether it's a phone app or an online editor, but you know, you get everything in your timeline, trim it up, move stuff around, 
and then from there export it. But I know there's other ones like that, but that's the one I have like a little bit of experience with um, on a browser. That's not like a separate program you have to download. And it seems pretty powerful. And they even have templates too, that you could use, you know, stuff that's already made for you and you just drop in your own videos and um, go from there. So check that one out. You can also just Google online video editors and see, um, you know, if there's ones that would suit your needs better. Okay, what about Dr. N? Thank you. That was good. Interesting. Go ahead, sir. Uh, thank you, Heather. That was very, very illuminating. And uh, thank you for the inspirational talk. Uh, I am dated in the work that I have done because I used video cameras. And uh, the second thing is I also prefer to have the laptop to use as my teleprompter which has got some advantages because you are definitely reading from a laptop with the camera mounted right just above the screen. So your eyesight is perfect. Mm -hmm. uh, problem with lighting uh, on your glasses. I do wear glasses. And uh, my way of uh, figuring that out is uh, don't keep the light, uh, light behind the camera. Keep it on the two sides. Have two lamps. Keep it on the sides so that you get uh, the, the reflection. Uh, the point to Diane, which I wanted to say, you can email your images uh, from your iPad uh, to your computer because it uses your email address. So you can do it that way. Uh, one last thing I, that I would recommend that you consider is uh, regarding clothing. I discovered that when I do work with video on my, uh, on my laptop with a video camera mounted on the top, if I wear red, my picture becomes blue. When I wear blue, my, I become uh, almost like I'm a Con Husker football fan. I'm red. So uh, clothing is a very, uh, thank you for bringing that point up. Clothing is very, very important. Uh, I do have a slightly darker complexion with just another thing you just made. Lighting does have some uh, effect on the skin. That's why I use two lamps, not one. I do not use phones, but still, I've learned something today. I'm going to try those things. Thank you. Cool. Yeah, All sure right. thing. Thank you. So Kathy, would you like to go? Yeah, just real quick. Thank you. Um, Heather, my business is skincare. And so I like to do demos on video, but I always have a hard time. Like I've got a mirror, I've got the light, I've got my phone I've, and I don't know where to look and I don't know how to really, do you have any tips on how to how to make that the easiest and best. So it's you, you putting skincare on or makeup yeah. on. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I mean, it's not something I've done myself. Um, I would just like, um, thinking about it, my initial thought would be to shoot from the side so that you're not shooting into the mirror where you could see the light in the camera, but you're shooting your profile. Um, and then you could be putting, like, if I'm looking at the mirror cameras here, I could be putting on the makeup but turn and address this camera, blah, 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 blah. And now I'm going to do my mascara. And then you're here, you know, and kind of utilize the mirror. So they know that you're looking at a mirror, but then talk to the camera um, okay. side and that'll keep the reflection off the glass and all of that. I would, I would try that and see how it feels and looks to you. Okay. I think maybe another thing would be um, you could, if you could rig it up, put a mirror behind your ring light. Um, Mm -hmm. and kind of look into the mirror, but you're also looking right into the camera, you know, like yeah. the, the, the camera is part of the mirror or like taped to the mirror kind of. Right. Um, so they're like right up with you and with your skin, which by the way, you do have beautiful skin. So Thank your you. product mm -hmm. is working. Uh, thanks <laughs> very much. Okay. Thanks, Heather. Appreciate wow. it. Thanks for all the great questions. I think I'm going to uh, turn off the recording here. Uh, are you sure you want to stop?